Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 700 Club. I'm Andrew Knox in for Gordon Robertson today. The city of Nashville and the nation are reeling from the shooting yesterday at a Christian school that killed six people, including three children. Police shot and killed the attacker, identified as a transgender female who once attended the school. The targeted attack was meticulously planned. Police found detailed maps, surveillance of the school, and a manifesto at the shooter's home. Ephraim Graham brings us the latest. The shooting unfolded Monday morning at the Covenant School, a Christian school with 200 students from preschool through sixth grade. Disturbing new images released by police show how the deadly events unfolded. There's multiple victims down inside the school. Shooter is down as now as well. The shooter identified as Audrey Hale, a 28-year-old female who identifies as transgender. This surveillance video shows Hale driving up to the school and firing through a glass door to gain entry. The shooter was armed with two assault-style weapons and a pistol, seen here in new images released by police. Once inside, investigators say Hale shot and killed six people. Three of those were children. Uh, two of them were age nine. One was eight, about to be nine. The young victims are identified as Evelyn Dacus, William Kenny, and Hallie Scruggs. Scruggs is the daughter of the pastor of Covenant Presbyterian Church. The head of the school, Katherine Coons, was also killed, along with teacher Cynthia Peak and custodian Mike Hill. We just need to embrace those that are grieving because we grieve with them. Police say Hale fired at officers from a second story window of the school. Two officers ran toward that gunfire, shooting and killing her just 14 minutes after the first 911 call. Overnight, investigators found more guns and evidence at Hale's home, including detailed maps, surveillance of the school, and a manifesto revealing a planned targeted attack. Still, so far, police have not revealed a motive. This deadly shooting once again bringing the debate over gun reform front and center. Well, this person had two AR-15s and a handgun. You don't need this to go hunting. Uh, you don't need that to protect your family. Congressman Tim Burchett represents Knoxville, Tennessee, and called the shooting horrible, but says there's no need to ban assault weapons. I don't think you're going to stop the gun violence. The common thread is you've got somebody who's mentally ill and, and evil. As Nashville residents struggle to cope with the tragedy that struck their city, the community is coming together at a prayer vigil Monday night. City leaders, law enforcement and residents alike all request continued prayer as families of the victims grieve and the investigation into the assault continues. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. Thank you, Ephraim. Well, if you're like me, I'm sure many of you see this in the news and you experience anger, feelings of anger and frustration, yet heartbreak and sadness. And we think of these families who wake up this morning, if they slept at all, and realize this was not just a nightmare. This is now my life. I've lost my child. I've lost my loved one. If we as a community and a nation can somehow channel our anger and frustration to in a unified way, uh, seek steps in uh, addressing those with mental illness and this confusion and make schools safer and in our sadness, can we pray for those children who survived this but now are living in terror, having experienced this in the families and those church staff who are now trying to comfort these families? Uh, just because the shooter is dead does not mean this event is over. Uh, Psalm 34, 18, I believe it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those crushed in spirit. And let's pray those words for this community now. In other news, Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu has hit the pause button after days of protests threatened the nation's government. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John. Thanks, Andrew. The prime minister addressed the nation announcing Monday night a pause in the judicial reform legislation until after the month-long Passover recess. As CBN's Chris Mitchell reports, some say the long assault by those opposing reform caused a deep division within the country bordering on civil war. In his address, Netanyahu cited King Solomon and the wisdom of splitting the baby in two and said he wanted to avoid splitting the nation in two. When there's an opportunity to avoid civil war through dialogue, 
I, as Prime Minister, am taking a time for dialogue. I give a real opportunity for a real dialogue. We insist on the need to bring about the necessary corrections in the legal system, and we're given an opportunity to achieve a broad consensus. This is a very worthy goal. After the address, Israeli President Isaac Herzog asked Netanyahu and opposition leaders Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid to work together to find a compromise. They agreed. We will show up at the president's residence. We will extend our hand. I call on Netanyahu to take away the threats, ultimatums and extreme statements that keep us away from the goal. Stop everything and send relevant teams to the president's residence. We will work to strengthen democracy, improve governance and maintain the independence of the judicial system. The White House applauded Netanyahu's decision. Democratic societies are strengthened by checks and balances and fundamental changes to a democratic system should be pursued with the broadest possible base of popular support. And so that's what we're going to continue to call for. Yet proponents of the legislation said the law was designed to bring a check and balance on what they called Israel's runaway judicial judiciary, arguing that the judicial system has had little or no restraint on it for decades. And many saw nearly 12 weeks of street protests as an attempt not just to win the debate over judicial reform, but to topple the government with accusations of the end of democracy and a dictatorship. I don't remember that at the time that the levels of hatred were this violent, were this um, supported by the media, were driven by the media. Israeli commentator Carolyn Glick says the intense internal strife put Israel in peril in light of Israel's number one threat in the region, Iran. People who don't want Israel to take action against Iran, of all stripes and sizes, would want Israel to be submerged and domestic rioting and discord to make it impossible as a practical matter for the army, for the government, for our intelligence arms to concentrate and focus on the task at hand, which is taking out a sufficient percentage of Iran's nuclear capabilities to keep them off the ability to develop a nuclear arsenal. As Israelis look forward to celebrating the Passover and the miracle of the Israelites' deliverance from their slavery in Egypt, many hope and pray Israel's leaders will experience a deliverance from one of the worst domestic crises in the history of modern Israel. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thank you, Chris. Well, here at home, a new study reveals some troubling news, views rather. Religion is becoming less important in America. That's according to a new poll from The Wall Street Journal and NORC. It finds only 39% of Americans say religious faith is a top priority. That's down from 62% back in 1998. The survey reveals a discrepancy in age in people who value religious beliefs. Some 31% of those under age 30 said religion is very important. That's compared to 55% of people 65 and over who feel the same way. The study also showed that belief in the value of patriotism, community, and having children are all down. The study did find one value that's grown in importance over the last 25 years, money. Well, there's a new push to bring a foundation of biblical principles to American politics. The American First Policy Institute wants to empower people of faith when it comes to speaking about issues central to the future of the United States. Evangelical leaders, including alums from the Trump administration's Faith Advisory Council, helped launch the Biblical Foundations Project right here in D.C. Monday. Politics matter because policy matters. Policy matters because people matter. And politics is really the ability to organize and influence. I think politics are in the church already because many pastors are so political. God never called us to be conversationalists. Yeah. He called us to confront people with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The group addresses topics ranging from foreign policy to domestic issues, including protecting freedom of speech and parental rights in education. Well, turning to the major recovery effort underway across Mississippi after that EF-4 tornado stretching nearly a mile wide carved a 60-mile path of destruction. Now, relief groups are on the ground and offering assistance. CBN's Caitlin Burke has the latest on the effort to bring the victims not just the physical help they need, but spiritual comfort as well. 
As authorities and residents assess damage, disaster relief teams are on the ground helping on a personal level. I spoke with folks from both Operation Blessing and Samaritan's Purse, who have workers providing immediate help to those affected in this devastated region. When we arrived in Rolling Fork, we were struck with how abrupt the path of destruction began. The houses on the outskirts of town were virtually untouched, but once you seemed to cross an invisible line, uh, the destruction got increasingly bad and to a point where there was only piles of debris in the center of town. As Operation Blessing teams spread out across the disaster zone, relief supplies are already headed to local church partners. Silver City said their biggest need was hygiene kits. And then we have uh, water, uh, Home Depot buckets, and uh, cleaning supplies en route to Emory. Franklin Graham, president of Samaritan's Purse, says much of this region is very poor, with many of the victims uninsured. That, he says, is where organizations like his come in. I think sometimes God uh, puts us in places like this so that um, we can be the insurance for them. Uh, and that's and what I mean by being the insurance. God has given us the funds, the resources to be able to respond like this in a crisis. Graham says Samaritan's Purse teams are here in Jesus' name, and they're focused on quite literally being the hands and feet of Christ. But right now, we're not preaching. Uh, right now, we're just helping people clean up their homes, cut trees off their houses. If a house is still standing, they lost their roof, we help tarp it. Uh, so that they don't lose any more of their valuables in their home. As residents continue to dig out and clean up, these organizations pledge to be in the region as long as it takes. Uh, the damage is extensive, and so this will be a long rebuilding effort. FEMA teams are also on the ground in Mississippi, and President Biden pledges full federal government support in emergency response efforts. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. Thanks, Caitlin. Andrew, these people desperately need our prayers and support, both tangible and spiritual. John, thanks so much. You know, it, we can become kind of naive when it comes to these storms coming through. It's just another news story. But in this particular case, when people started to see the actual devastation this tornado left behind, it's almost inconceivable, the destruction here. People are hurting, but you're seeing through Samaritan's Purse and Operation Blessing, the hands and feet of Jesus, the church being the church, Christ followers helping others. This is what we're called to do. You know, Operation Blessing has a team in Turkey still these many weeks later after the earthquake. And now now here we are seeking to serve another community. It's our pleasure to do so at Operation Blessing. We would love for you to get involved with us. You can join the effort to help these folks who are so, so devastated by this storm. So you can give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, or contact the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. Great easy way to join in this effort is to text OBDR to 71777 and help our teams with Operation Blessing help those so devastated and in such heartbreak because of this disaster.